Welcome to Verify This, the show that answers your questions and separates fact from fiction so that you can determine whether viral claims online are true or false. I'm your host, Ariane Daytil. Here's a quick look at what we're covering today on Verify This. Does the Inflation Reduction Act cut billions of dollars for Medicare and cap insulin prices? Does the chickenpox vaccine or a previous chickenpox infection protect you from monkeypox? House Speaker Nancy Pelosi recently took a trip to Taiwan. Do these videos show China's military response? And is it true that putting a shade over your central air conditioning unit outside reduces power costs and helps it run more efficiently? The answers to these questions and more coming up on Verify This. Let's start off the show with a question sent in from a viewer in Georgia about Medicare. The U.S. Senate passed the Inflation Reduction Act. The sweeping piece of legislation includes changes to climate and health care policy. A recent attack ad is claiming that one of those changes is a massive cut to Medicare. But as Casey Decker explains, that isn't what the bill actually does. For two years, Democrats have been working to pass legislation to achieve their goals on economic health and climate policy. The Senate has just finally done so, passing the Inflation Reduction Act. Ads attacking the bill have already hit airwaves, like this one sent to us by a Verify viewer in Georgia. Washington liberals like Raphael Warnock say their partisan spending bill lowers seniors' drug costs, when actually it cuts nearly $300 billion from Medicare. So is that true? Does the Inflation Reduction Act cut billions of dollars from Medicare? To verify, we looked at the text of the bill, the analysis of the bill by the Congressional Budget Office, and we went to sources specializing in health and budget policy. All our sources confirmed this bill as written does not cut any funding to Medicare. What it aims to do is actually save Medicare money by reducing how much it pays out to drug companies. It does this in three ways. The first is to give the federal government the authority to negotiate with drug companies over how much it'll pay for certain Medicare covered drugs. The second way is to institute a cap on how much drug companies are allowed to raise the prices they charge Medicare each year. And the third way, undoing a Trump era rule that banned drug makers from giving discounts to insurers in order to keep their products on the insurer's list of approved drugs. The Trump administration saw those discounts as kickbacks, but proponents of the new bill say they're an important way of cutting drug prices. According to the Congressional Budget Office, all that adds up to nearly $300 billion in savings for Medicare over the next nine years. But it's cost savings, not budget cuts. In fact, the text of the Senate bill includes billions in new spending for Medicare. AARP calls the claims the legislation would cut Medicare a lie, saying, quote, this bill saves Medicare nearly $300 billion by lowering the price of drugs. Only drug companies would say that saving people money is a bad thing. The nonpartisan Committee for a Responsible Federal Budget made similar statements, calling the advertisements misleading attacks. All that means we can verify, no, the Inflation Reduction Act does not cut billions of dollars from Medicare. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. But wait, there's more. We also looked into a claim that a $35 monthly cap on insulin, an expensive life-saving drug for people with diabetes, was removed from the Inflation Reduction Act. Here's what we found. Millions of Americans have diabetes and need insulin to survive, but the price of the drug is often expensive. The Inflation Reduction Act, a bill recently passed by the U.S. Senate, which in part aims to lower rising costs of goods while paying down the nation's debt, also includes provisions to make health care more affordable. But there are a lot of tweets like this one on social media claiming that Senate Republicans just succeeded in stripping the $35 per month insulin price cap from the bill, keeping insulin prices high for Americans. So let's verify. Was the price cap on insulin removed from the Inflation Reduction Act? Our sources are the Inflation Reduction Act of 2022 and the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. This claim needs some context. The final version of the Inflation Reduction Act passed by the Senate does cap insulin prices for some people, but not for as many as originally intended. Let me explain. The original text of the bill capped insulin prices for both Medicare and private insurance patients at $35 a month. But the cap for patients with private insurance ran afoul of Senate rules, forcing a separate vote on that provision, which failed to get enough Republican support to pass. As a result, the approved bill caps insulin prices at $35 a month for Medicare patients only. More than 63 million Americans are enrolled in Medicare, and one out of every three Medicare patients has diabetes, according to the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. 
So we can verify that the Inflation Reduction Act still contains a price cap on insulin, but it only applies to Medicare patients and not for people with private insurance. It's time for my first shameless plug. Head on over to the Verify This Instagram page. We host weekly themed trivia on our stories and our feed, like this one, testing your news knowledge. To play along, search for Verify This on the app, click that follow button and the little bell so you get notified the next time we play. It's time for this week's Did You Know, where we feature one relatively unknown interesting fact that we, of course, verified. So here goes. Did you know Q is the only letter that doesn't appear in any US state? It's true. The most common letter in state name is, I'll give you a second to guess here, S. And we have just one of those in my home state, Pennsylvania. If you liked that Did You Know, sign up for our daily newsletter. It has a new Did You Know every day, as well as three fast facts and more of our recent stories. To sign up, go to verifythis.com slash email. Next up, we've gotten a lot of questions from viewers about monkeypox, how it spreads and how you can protect yourself. For instance, Dave asked us if the chickenpox vaccine protects against monkeypox. Casey Decker has this answer. Monkeypox cases in the US have now exceeded 6,000, but there's still a very limited supply of vaccines. However, lots of Americans have been vaccinated against chickenpox or have immunity to it from a prior infection. So Verify viewer Dave asked us, can immunity to chickenpox protect you from monkeypox? We verified using these sources. Chickenpox and monkeypox have some similarities beyond just their names. For instance, they both cause rashes and are spread primarily through skin to skin contact. But the two viruses are not closely related. Chickenpox is a very common disease that uh, many of us have gotten as kids, but it does not protect against monkeypox because they're just completely different virus families. Chickenpox is caused by the same virus as shingles, while the virus that causes monkeypox is closely related to the smallpox virus. Smallpox was eradicated decades ago, but the US government has kept a stockpile of the vaccine on the off chance the virus is revived and used as a bioweapon. The CDC and WHO say that the smallpox vaccine is also about 85% effective against monkeypox, and in fact is what's being provided now. There's just not enough of it to meet demand. But the chickenpox vaccine is no substitute. So we can verify no immunity to chickenpox will not protect you from monkeypox. With your fast fact, I'm Casey Decker. If you see something that you want verified, just send us a text to 202-410-8808. Once you sign up for our daily fast facts delivered straight to your phone, you can start submitting those claims that you would like to have verified. And if you wanna be really fancy, record a video of yourself asking the question and then email it to questions at verifythis.com. You never know, your question could end up in next week's show. Next up, Taiwan is a major flashpoint in American relations with China, and tensions escalated recently when Nancy Pelosi made a rare visit. Some videos online claim to show American and Chinese military exercises in response to the trip. But are those videos legit? Here's Casey Decker with what we found. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi just took a trip to Taiwan, a self-governed island of more than 23 million people that's claimed by China. She's the highest ranking American official to visit Taiwan since then speaker Newt Gingrich went 25 years ago. The Chinese government called the visit a major provocation and announced it would conduct a number of military exercises as a show of force. Videos have been circulating online that claim to show those exercises or American military exercises in response. But do they really show a response to Pelosi's visit? We used these sources to verify. One easy way to determine if a video is what it purports to be is to see if that same video has been posted before. For instance, this video posted on August 2nd claims to show China, quote, warming up the missile shots tonight. But by doing a reverse image search, we found the same video posted in 2020 and several foreign news outlets then identified it as a Taiwanese military exercise. Next, this video with more than 100,000 views is captioned, World War III is on the verge. U.S. Navy warplanes fly near Taiwan. The Verified team did a reverse image search on this one too and found the same video was posted as early as 2021. Those earlier posts say the video was filmed in the Philippines. The U.S. military hasn't confirmed where those exercises were held, but it's clear from comparing the videos and looking at the timestamp, they were not filmed during Pelosi's visit. 
So we can verify, no, these viral videos do not show Chinese or American military exercises around Speaker Pelosi's visit to Taiwan. With your Verify, I'm Casey Decker. If you aren't following us on TikTok yet, pull out that phone right now and do it. If for no other reason than to watch this video from Verify's Kylie, explaining why Alex Jones can't appeal the verdict in the Sandy Hook trial because of ineffective counsel. To check out the full video, search for Verify This on the app and click that follow button so you're the first one to see what we post next. Our last story is based on a question from Verify viewer Jennifer in Texas, who's looking for ways to stay cool on a budget in this hot weather. Amid the heat warnings and advisories that have been issued for more than 100 million Americans at least twice this summer, Jennifer came across a claim that putting a shade over your AC unit could save you some cash. She asked us to verify if it's legit. So Jennifer, here's what we found. First, the heat wave hit the Northeast. Now, the West Coast is feeling the heat, and many people are looking for the best ways to stay cool without breaking the bank. Verify viewer Jennifer from Texas asked us to verify if one trick that's making the rounds online is true. Hello, Verify. This is Jennifer from Texas. And what I'd like to know is if covering your air conditioner unit with an umbrella really does help save with power costs and really does make your air conditioner run more efficiently. So Jennifer, let's verify. Our sources are Wes Davis, Technical Services Director for the Air Conditioning Contractors of America, Florida Solar Energy Center, and Energy Vanguard, a firm that focuses on training and consulting for building performance. Putting a shade over an outdoor AC unit like this one doesn't improve energy efficiency in any noticeable way, according to air conditioning expert Wes Davis. It's not statistically impactful. A 1996 study conducted by the Florida Solar Energy Center studied the impact of shading centralized AC units. According to the study, localized shading over a unit could in theory reduce electricity consumption, but the results weren't conclusive. In fact, it could make your AC unit perform worse. That's because the method of shading, like a tarp or an umbrella, could restrict airflow to the unit. Let me show you why that's an issue. The AC in a central air system works by first pulling the air from inside of your house and separating the heat from it. It then sends the heat out to the condenser, which is the box with a fan that sits outside of your house. The condenser's fan pulls the outside air into the unit, and then that air absorbs the heat before it's dumped back outside of the unit. In order to work properly, the outdoor portion of an AC unit requires air to flow over the coil and fan, according to Energy Vanguard. The company says objects placed directly overhead of the unit blocking the fan, like an umbrella or a tarp or even plant debris, could restrict the airflow and trap heat over the unit. If less air flows over the coil, less heat is removed, Energy Vanguard says. That means the whole cycle warms up a bit and your AC works harder to keep your home cool. So we can verify, no. Putting a shade over central AC's outside unit does not reliably reduce power cost or help it run more efficiently. And it could potentially make it run worse. Now it's time for me to go back in the house where it's cool. Okay, there's time for one last did you know before we go. Did you know that baby llamas are called Kriyas and that a group of ferrets is called a business? Aww. The more you know. I can't wait until one of you is playing some trivia game and these wildly random facts help you win. You're welcome in advance. If you liked that Did You Know, sign up for our daily newsletter. It has a new Did You Know every day, as well as three fast facts and more of our recent stories. To sign up, go to verifythis.com slash email. On behalf of our entire Verify team, I hope you enjoyed our show and that you learned something new today. I'm your host, Adian Till. If you're craving even more fact checks, head on over to the Verify This YouTube page. That's where you can find bingeable fast facts, extended interviews with our experts, and lots and lots of fact checks. And while you're there, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. As always, if there's something else that you see and you want us to verify it, just send us a text to 202-410-8808. And if you send us your question as a video, you could end up in the show. Our number is still on your screen, so make sure to lock us in, and we'll see you back here next week with answers to more of your questions, Verified. For more episodes of Verified This, go to our video on demand. Click Shows at the top of your screen, and there you'll find past episodes of Verified This, plus other shows on demand.